Now finding out prime numbers is of course a very important task and the first such effort in this direction was actually made by a Greek mathematician Eratosthenes. Now Eratosthenes was not really only a mathematician, he was a very intelligent scientist and he was the first one to find out the circumference of the earth. He was also the first person to actually find out the tilt of the earth. So he was, he was a very important contributor to several fields and his sieve method was the first systematic way of finding out the prime numbers. So the method we look at how it works by considering all the numbers from 1 to 100. Right at the beginning of this method what we do is that we mark 1 as not being a prime number because 1 is not, not neither a composite nor a prime we know that so we cancel out 1 we do not bring it into consideration at all. The method works by actually removing or filtering out all the composite numbers. So whatever numbers are really left behind would naturally be prime numbers. So that is the basic idea of this method. And we systematically go from one number to the next marking out all the composite numbers uh, in the process. So let's start. So the next number after 1 we consider is number 2. What we do is that we find out all the multiples of this number 2 in this list and we say and we cross them out. See all the multiples of number 2 for example number 4 in addition to having 1 and 4 as factors this number 4 would also have 2 as factor and therefore it can never be a prime number. The same is true for other multiples of 2 as well and therefore we cancel out the other multiples of 2. So all we, we just say the table of 2 and we cancel the numbers out or we look at all the even numbers which have definitely would have 2 as a factor and we cancel them out. Either way we have cancelled quite a few of these numbers and remove them as our candidates from being, uh, from being the prime number. So now these are the numbers, these are the possible candidates for being the prime numbers and the candidates are shown in pink according to our convention. The numbers which have been greyed out can not be prime numbers. So we have already removed those from our consideration. They are the non-prime numbers or the composite numbers. Next we move on to number 3. Now at this point I would like you to consider this. When we reach a number we have already looked at all the numbers below it. So when we reach 3 we have looked at number 1, we have looked at number 2 already right. So we have looked at number 2 already when we reach 3. Similarly when we reach other number we have looked at all the numbers below it and we were not able to find a factor of number 3 in those numbers. So when we looked at all the numbers below 3 in case, this case only there is only one number 2 and we were not able to find a factor of number 3 below number 3 otherwise 3 would have been cancelled. So 3 is not cancelled which means that 3 has only 2 factors 1 and 3 itself. This means that when we reach a number and it has not been cancelled it has to be a prime number. We were not able to find any factor of that number below that number. So the only possible factors are 1 and the number itself and it has to be a prime number. So now we look at we mark 3 as a prime number. So in, in our case we are marking the prime numbers as blue. So we do that and we then consider all the multiples of number 3. So the first multiple of number 3 is 6 which is already cancelled out so we don't have to worry about it at all. Next multiple of 3 we consider is 9 and we grey it out. So we are greying out all the multiples of number 3 now and of course we grey them out and we remove all the multiples of number 9 because they have to be composite numbers. In addition to having themselves and 1 as factor they also have 3 as factor and they can never be a prime numbers. So all of those 9, 15 all of those are now gone. Now at this point let us move on to the next number and consider number 4. See the thing about number 4 is it is already greyed out. So we know that it can never be a prime number it is definitely a composite number which is which we already know right because 4 has 2 as a factor so therefore 4 is definitely a composite number it is not a prime number so that much we know 
what about multiples of 4 do we have to consider the multiples of 4 at all see we don't have to consider multiple of 4 at all because they would have been cancelled already by virtue of the factors of 4 okay so when we consider the factors of 4 we would have cancelled the multiples of 4 as well for example let's consider multiple of 4 which is 8 so this 8 when we consider a factor of 4 that is 2 we not only cancelled 4 but at the same time we cancelled 8 as well so in, in that what that what does that mean it means that when we come to a number and it is grayed out we can completely ignore that number that number can never be a prime number and we don't have to uh, consider the multiple of that number at all so we ignore 4 completely we don't do any maths with it with it and we move on to the next number which is number 5 of course 5 has not been cancelled so far so we mark it as prime the only possible factors of 5 are 1 and 5 itself we are not able to find any factor below 5 so 5 is marked as a, uh, a prime number and then we go on to mark the multiples of 5 as composite numbers so all the multiples of 5 of course appear below 5 as such and they are marked as com uh, composite numbers and removed from our consideration completely next we move on to number 7 and we do the same process we mark 7 as number as a prime number because it has not been cancelled yet and after that we mark all the multiples of 7 which have been left so far from we remove it from our consideration and we gray them out now you have to understand that we did not look at 6 at all because all the multiples of 6 have already been cancelled when we looked at either 2 or 3 so 2 or 3 are factors of 6 and when we uh, looked at 2 or 3 we would have cancelled all the multiples of 6 as well that is the first thing to note at this point the second thing to note at this point is that we do not have to go below after uh, above number 10 when doing this process why is that the case see let's consider the number 11 for example and we are, let's understand why we don't have to do this process for number 11 the only way i can come up with multiples of 11 in this region from number from 1 to 100 is by multiplying number 11 with numbers from 1 to 9 okay so only if when i multiply number 11 with numbers from 1 to 9 i can get a number which is less than 100 11 9s are 99 if i go above 9 and i say 11 into 10 then i get a number which is above 100 so at this point i know that when i am considering number 11 okay I have already considered all the other factors with which 11 could be multiplied to get a number below 100. So because I have already considered and I have already cancelled all the factors of numbers from 1 to 9, I don't really have to consider the multiples of 11 at all because those would have already been cancelled when I looked at when i looked at the numbers from 1 to 9 this means that i only have to go till number 10 repeat this process in this sieve method i only have to go till number 10 the speciality of number 10 is that it is square root of 100 so 100 is our last number and i only have to do this process until i do the until i reach the square root of 100 which is 10 numbers above 10 for numbers about 10 we would have already cancelled those numbers uh, when we looked at the other factor of uh, of that number which would have to be below 10 in this case so that completes the c method and we have these are all the factors the pink numbers which are left here uh, and the uh, blue numbers which are left here are now our prime numbers Right? So, we will mark the prime numbers blue to complete our process to, to complete this convention and this is what we get.